Hey everyone, welcome back to Keeping Up with the Chaldeans. I'm your host, Junior Binu, along with Anthony Toma, and today we have Vinar from AR Law. Today, before we start, we want to make sure you guys hit the subscribe button, hit the like, make sure you follow us, share the episodes, and let people know uh, Keeping Up with the Chaldeans and what we're about. So today we've got uh, Mr. AR on, and he's ready to talk about uh, three letters that a lot of us tend to not want to ever run into if we can in life. That's the IRS. Uh, those people definitely can come down hard on you. Many of us have dealt with cash businesses and done other, other businesses in life that had uh, little bumps and hurdles. And this gentleman here would give us a hand and let us know some of the stuff that uh, we can get through with, uh, with uh, hiccups that we run into in business day to day. So it's good to have you on, brother. Thank you for having me. Good it's good to see you for joining us. Good. What's, uh, what's your thought on this, having the, 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 those three letters on deck today? Uh, we've, I mean, I'm sure we've all had issues with the IRS, and if we haven't, uh, we, we probably will one day in the future, and we have a man that can uh, help us resolve those issues. Uh, he's best known for helping uh, uh, President Trump pay only $750 in taxes this year. Ah, <laughs> man. Yeah, good yeah. job. That yeah. wasn't me, but I have had some people <laughs> who owed millions, and I settled for thousands. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> So, it's not that uncommon. So right. let's get into some of the stuff that you do, the individuals yeah. that you deal with, yeah. and uh, what you're all about, and let people know proudly how strong you are in the state of Michigan as AR Law. Yeah. So I'd say most of my business is individuals and businesses who are struggling with their taxes. Okay. It's usually payroll tax, sales tax, income tax, haven't filed, haven't paid. Mm -hmm. um, I also defend people in audits. Sure. Okay. Um, sometimes cases go criminal and mm -hmm. then I'll defend people in federal court mm -hmm. who are accused of tax evasion or, okay. you know, sometimes people are getting sued by the Department of Justice. Mm -hmm. Pretty much any problem somebody might have with the IRS, even if it's an accountant and the IRS is trying to penalize them for doing shady things, wow. yeah, I, I defend those too. So, That's but most of the business is people who haven't filed, haven't paid or both. Okay. And, and the penalties that come with that, for example, let's do, look at two case scenarios, an individual who hasn't. Uh, uh, filed for their individual taxes, and then a business who hasn't done either their their taxes as well. They're two separate cases, right? So the individual, what what's some of the stuff that they can face not filing, and how far does it go out? Yeah, so if you don't do your taxes, mm -hmm. eventually the IRS will, will catch on to you, and they'll either make you do them or do them for you. Okay. If you got like 1099s or something that you haven't filed, they'll just throw together a tax return. They won't give you any deductions throw you a giant bill, and then come get their money. Sure. Okay? Um, there's huge penalties. The penalty for failing to file mm -hmm. is 5% a month, yep. up to 25%. The, fail the penalty for failing to pay is half a percent a month, also up to 25% a month. Wow. Usually the situation people find themselves in, though, when you haven't done your taxes for a few years, mm -hmm. you're going to end up owing them a lot of money. Sure. Relatively. You know, because taxes are based on how much you make. If you make a lot, you'll owe them a lot. If you make a little you'll still owe them a lot to you. And most of the times, the way we solve the problems is by negotiating over how much they can afford to pay. I don't worry about the penalties right. or how much the tax already is. The first thing I'm looking at is how much can you pay? Sure. Okay? And then based on that, we can either negotiate a payment plan, we can settle with them. Mm -hmm. You know, if you, if you can't settle with them, then we start looking at waiving penalties. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's there, if there's a husband and wife, the wife doesn't always know what was going on. Yep. I can get her off the hook. Yeah, Zila. There's a, <laughs> yeah. There's she a was just, things, she was just like, spending, no worries. Yeah, but everybody's entitled to pay what they can afford. Okay. So like, for example, I had a guy who was running a Ponzi scheme. Mm -hmm. Okay, he went to prison, got out. He owes the IRS $13 million. Jesus. Okay, they come after him. And they want to garnish him. But, you know, this guy's an ex-con. didn't really have any money. Mm -hmm. I was able to get him on a payment plan for $25 a month. Okay. okay. On a $13 million debt because that's what I was able to convince the IRS all he can afford. Sure. Okay. So how many years is he going to be paid up in? Generally, the taxes expire $25. after 10 years. Oh, oh okay. So he's yeah. got he's got to make, pay $25 a month for 10 years. It's not that simple. But Right, right. Yeah. When you're on a low payment plan like that, Within two years, they'll come back and try and shake you down again. Yeah, so if he starts yes. making more money, they'll get you more. Show it and you that's when you step in again? Again, <laughs> again yes. You, you come in and so say, why doesn't he just fire up another Ponzi scheme and pay his debt? <laughs> <laughs> no comment on that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, it's, it's, um, it's, it's crazy the way we face things nowadays, though, scrutiny under cash versus credit, debit, all that other stuff. 
So uh, before, when we used to do all our business, it used to be your Z tape, your X tape, you know, mm -hmm. you used to just do the regular register tapes and then sub submit in. So I was talking to my CPA about a year ago, and he said, you know how easy things are now, you know, where, where they can identify stuff? He said a guy tried to lie about his business. He said the lady... Um, he said I, he went and brought me the old school, the boxes and the forty ounce boxes with the Z tapes. Mm. He said we went and dropped it off to the to the state for all, for all, for the IRS to look at everything. And he said it took her two and a half hours. She didn't have to do nothing. She called the distributors and asked them how much purchases were made from distributors mm -hmm. versus what this guy was putting in. In a matter of two and a half hours, she knew if she find him two hundred fifty thousand dollars. She already knew it. Called mm -hmm. him and said, "Come on in." Yeah. Got to pay it. That sounds like probably sales tax. Yeah. Because what they do with the sales tax audit is they do a lot of statistical modeling. Mm -hmm. They'll like when restaurants don't report their cash, yeah. they'll come stand there for three days and count all your sales and figure out what percentage of your sales is cash and what percentage is credit card, and then they just apply that percentage back. They say, oh, seventy percent credit card. You didn't report any cash, therefore. Do they you know, announce they that they're coming in to stand there for three days? Um. If yeah, they have to tell you. You know. Okay. So you can when the, what, but they're going to walk in. Tell them everyone pay with a credit card. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no cash today. Right. That's, That's crazy. crazy. No today. <laughs> yeah, that is that. I didn't think about that. That, that is that is nuts. We um we had a Chaldean um in our community, Randy Randall Denha. Mm -hmm. Um Randy Denha years and years ago wrote a very strong article. I believe it hit Forbes magazine. Okay. He called it. It was partners, but not partners with the IRS. Yeah. And I don't know if you ever had um gotten a chance to read that or. I'm going to ask him about that. Randy's a good friend of mine. Yeah, so he's, a, he's a great guy. He wrote it. Pretty much he's saying basically I, he's a very smart guy. Pretty much every time sure, you're in business, still. everything you're doing, that's who your partners are. Mm -hmm. Your IRS you're only is your partners when you make money, though, not when you lose money. Yes. You're right. <laughs> Today's episode is made possible by Clearview Security. Clearview Security is a service that offers commercial and residential security services and automation. Everything from home security cameras, residential automation to business security as well too, fully automated as well. Check them out at clearviewsecure.com or give them a call today at 855-903-SAFE. That's 855-903-SAFE, 7233. Yes, yes. So, so in regards to all the stuff that we're seeing now, things have changed. We went from party store style businesses, gas stations and everything. Cash has changed in our retail businesses. Like, Anthony is saying, like, you know, we get a lot more credit cards and debit cards, but now we've entered into a new realm. You've got the cannabis industry right mm -hmm. now. Um, there's a huge gray line. It doesn't matter if you're Chaldean, if you're American, African American, it doesn't matter what you are. You're yeah. dealing with the same dilemma. Yeah. If you're a caregiver, if you're in that industry, you got to find banks, you got to find, you know, those mm -hmm. holes to be able to plug without getting popped by the IRS for things that you're doing. Got you know, a lot of Lambos and right. Rolexes being paid, bought, yes. bought right. paid with cash. And yeah. don't forget, after all this is done, you can go see Bruce at 14K when you need to turn that in and you can't afford the Roly no more. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep, please. Yep. Um, what I tell people, people ask me all the time in that business. I mean, I never tell people how to get away with cheating. You know, that's, that wouldn't be ethical. But I would tell them how most people get caught mm -hmm. is they spend more money than they show. You know, buying the expensive cars. The big one is the casinos. Everybody wants to flash their money around when they're in the casino. They want yeah. them to skip the line at their buffet or, you know, they want them high roller points. If you get audited, the first thing they're going to do is go and get your player's card and see how much money you blew at the casino. And they're not looking to tax your winnings. They're looking to see how much money you lost. Right. Because you must have made at least that much money to lose that kind of money. So uh, I've seen some people get in, you know, big trouble because they were gamblers. Mm -hmm. And we didn't have an explanation. Now... One thing you never want to do if you find yourself in a situation is don't ever lie to them. I always tell people, just don't answer their questions. You know, you have Fifth Amendment right. Mm -hmm. You don't have to. They, they have a right to audit you. They can ask you questions. But they can't make you answer questions that might be incriminating, mm -hmm. especially for people who are in the, like, illegal side of the marijuana business or sure. the gray area side. Yep. You know, there's no federal protections. They could process, they could send your case to the DEA if mm -hmm. you're not compliant with state laws. They have okay. something called the Cole Memorandum that says if you're following the laws of your state, the DEA won't get involved. But if you're not following the laws of the state and you're you know doing a caregiver model or you got a rogue dispensary or whatever the case is, mm -hmm. then there is no protection from federal drug charges. Right. So I absolutely like I've had people who were growers in their basement. The IRS comes and they say, well, we want to tour the business. Well, what business? Well, he grows marijuana. He already told me. So who said anything about a business? Yeah. Go prove he sells the marijuana. 
you know. And in cases where, uh, in the marijuana type stuff, especially the illegal operators, mm -hmm. the best defense is just keep your mouth shut, just like any other like, right. criminal case. Sure. Now, for the legal operators, the people are 100% on the up and up, right. they got to take the opposite approach. Okay, they got to worry about proving every dollar and you got to show your cash controls and you got to like prove up all your expenses. Sure. But like on the other side of it, you know, you leave the, it up to the IRS and the, the biggest thing that I we have, mm -hmm. the biggest tool is A, they have to find something to make an assessment. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, and B, they have something called, uh, there's a case called Cohan mm -hmm. that says when you don't have any records, you can use reasonable estimates. Mm -hmm. So I've had people, like I had a case just the other day, or now last month we settled it, but I've been working on it for years. I had a taxpayer who was sent a bill for $7 million for running a dispensary. Wow. wow. We settled it for 350000 Okay, because we were able to show that we got like 70% cost of goods sold without any receipts. You know how with marijuana, the only thing you get to deduct is your cost of the mm -hmm. goods. Mm -hmm. We just negotiate a percentage. You don't have to worry about receipts so much if you don't have them, sure. you know? Because yeah. that, those would be incriminating. Mm -hmm. It's illegal what you are doing. Okay, sometimes when people come to me and they haven't even filed their return yet, yes. I'll tell them, I say, hey, what you're doing is illegal. If you put on the return how much your sales were, you would be admitting to a crime. If you put on the return how much your purchases were, mm -hmm. you would also be admitting to a crime. So what do you do? You have to, you have to file your taxes, that's well settled. Mm -hmm. As in those cases, I even sometimes tell people, you plead the fifth right on the tax return. Sure. So, you know, when you do uh, your business taxes, the first line is your gross receipts. The second line is your cost of goods sold. The third line is your gross profit. Mm -hmm. And then under that is all your other expenses. Yes. Well, the other expenses don't apply in marijuana. So what I've done in marijuana cases, I skip the first and second line. Say Fifth Amendment, I'm not telling you how much my purchases were. Fifth Amendment, I'm not telling you how much my sales were. Sure. I'm just telling you I made 700000 Leave it at that. I got you. Okay. Send in the taxes. Now, if you do that, you will get audited. So okay. I've only done that for people who are already under investigation. Yep. You know, because the alternative is to tell the truth, which is yes. not good, mm -hmm. or to lie, which is not good either. Mm -hmm. So that's the that's the middle ground is hold them to their proof. Sure. You know, everybody has a right to defend themselves. You have to pay your taxes. Sure. You know, there's a whole bunch of cases on how much needs to be on a return before it's not a return anymore. Like mm -hmm. if you just skipped everything and just on the front page said, okay, I owe you 20000 and I sent in a check for 20000 they won't process that. But in the case where I skip the first two lines and mm -hmm. I go straight to line three, mm -hmm. they've processed them. They didn't charge us with a penalty for frivolous position. Or, so what is, what's the penalty for uh, not keeping your receipts? I don't know that there is one. Okay. I, I think there's a penalty for accountants to keep the records that they rely on. Right. But I've never encountered somebody be penalized for not keeping their records. Oh, really? Okay. Keeping, their person, keeping their business records. Right. I like that question because I've been thinking this seven years. I've got boxes that yeah, I've been yeah. holding every year for all the sales and yeah. everything that we've done. So I've been holding. Do we still have to do that then? Yeah, I mean, how long should you hold your documents? As a, I would hold them at least six years. Okay. But I've had cases where they can go back a lot longer than that. Um, specifically, if you're carrying a loss on your return. Mm-hmm. So, like, I had a guy who had a big loss in the 90s, and he was carrying it forward every year and using it against his taxes, and then they audited him in, like, 2010. Wow. And they said, now prove that you lost all that money in 1990, or we're not going to give you the carry oh, forward wow. loss. So he had to... He, had to, he didn't have the records. We lost so that. So he case. had to prove Right, that, even that, though they that, weren't that, auditing the yeah. 1990 tax yeah, return. But they go in far back. But you're going to see this return, you have a loss on there. So for some people, you might want to keep your records a lot longer than six years. Wow. Yeah. So you guys hear that, right? So you got to just make sure to keep up. If it's something mm -hmm. that goes further than what you're looking for past the seven years, then you're going to have to keep these documents, definitely. But now i got a question for you. Is it, um, is it true, the, the hearsay, um, about once the IRS gets on your back, they're never off your back? Are they pretty much just watching you with this microscope forever? No. Okay. Um, so, like, if you owe money mm -hmm. and you settle up with them, mm -hmm. you're done. Okay. If they audit you, at the end of the audit, the IRS agent has the ability to write up in their report that your record keeping practices are inadequate and if they do that you will get audited again in three Constantly. years okay. 
Okay. Okay, and because they, they do the inadequate records write up, but they'll tell you that they'll say, "Hey, we're going to report you as having inadequate record keeping, unless you convince us, tell us what you're doing differently, yeah. and we might take that off." But <coughs> except for when that happens, yeah, you know, once you're done with the case, you're, they're done with you. The best thing that to that I use that I always try to think of when I'm working with the IRS mm -hmm. is they don't give a shit. They yeah. don't care what happens. That's not their money. They don't get a bonus. Mm -hmm. They just want to close the case and move on. Yep. So really. What they want and what you want are not that far apart. Mm -hmm. Everybody just wants to finish it. Yeah, aren't they pretty? Aren't they kind of under understaffed and overwhelmed oh, right now? Yeah, big time, they big are. time. The audit rates are down like at historic lows. Right. The tax not. I had people during the pandemic that owed like three, four hundred thousand, and we're about to pay, and you know, because they had the money to pay. If you don't have the money, you're shut to down it. though. And then, and then, when they open back up. We got a letter saying your client's been placed in non-collectible status. They put them on the back burner because they don't have enough manpower to work yeah, the case. Wow. They were about to get like 300000 and they sent us a letter. said, don't worry about it right now. Right. So, so question for you and for the audience to know this, because we did have somebody within our community that actually had dealt with the IRS in a, um, in a tough way. But they actually won the case, and the case went to as far as CNN on this situation. Not to say that they're a great news media or anything, yeah. but um, the, the, the family had a insurance policy that they can if they were to god forbid to get robbed they cannot have they can only give value of up to nine or right under ten thousand cash that they will re reimburse back from insurance that was the policy that they held so the father was constantly during the day going to do under ten thousand so no ctr he, they said he was structuring but it wasn't he proved that it, it was on the policy and that's why he abided by the policy they had held up thousands and thousands of dollars for them they were hurting their business every bank blacklisted them at this point in time then so they couldn't even get them to to get back in the banks but they went as far to fight it fight it they got their money back yeah. but at that point in time the damage has been done yeah. you you've now had a quarter million held up you can't run your business it can be frozen for six months a year before mm -hmm. all this but they beat it so what's some stuff you can help people with stuff like that i mean with a structuring case or something like that that those are real tragedies because it happens. Sometimes legit businesses, mm -hmm. grocery stores, hotels I've seen um, where it's just the depositing. And I've seen other people structuring. I had one client who put like 9000 every single day in the bank, like a million and a half one year. And no, they didn't bother him. I mean, they investigated it. And they, they, they didn't take the money. They didn't do anything. But um, sometimes... People get lucky sometimes. People get screwed. Now, I've had sometimes rogue agents. Mm -hmm. I have, right now, I think two lawsuits, three lawsuits against the IRS um, for damages. I have um, one client who was under audit. He was, he, was, uh, he was getting paid. He was working for one company, and he was getting paid from one of their vendors, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And he's getting audited, and the IRS is, you know, giving him a hard time. And they went to his boss, and they told him about the money he was getting on the side. And he got fired. Mm -hmm. And so we, we're suing them now. And I, I, I think we have a really strong case. So sometimes they overstep their bounds and you fight back. But usually, you know, you just become a victim to the system, like the, the sure. structuring case where they were out all that money. They could have went out of business. And there's no recourse. You know, they don't have a lawsuit against the IRS. Nobody did anything wrong from the government's point of view. But it's just the way the system's designed. I mean, but sometimes having somebody who knows... Yeah. how things work on the inside. Yeah. It's not that you know people, you don't call in favor, it doesn't work like that, but you gotta know what's the quickest route to get in front of the right person, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And in that kind of case, I would probably threaten to sue the IRS. Sure. Just to get the Department of Justice's attention or the um, Associate Area Council's attention mm -hmm. right away and tr just try to work it out, Yep. you know? But sometimes it doesn't work that way. I have one guy right now that he, um. He was getting sued mm -hmm. back in the 90s. Yeah. And he was asked his lawyers, what should I do? It was a, it was a bullshit lawsuit. He won it at the end. But mm -hmm. the lawyer said, well, if you put your money in Switzerland, they can't find it. Oh, that's the old school. And he said, that's that's the right way to do it. Put your yeah. money in So you opened an account at UBS Bank in Switzerland. Yep. Put a million and a half clean money in there. Okay? Ten years later, 15 years later, the IRS comes. They audit him. You know, UBS ended up snitching on all their clients. Yeah. yeah. Gave over a list. Yep. He was on the list. Wow. They came, they audited him, and they said he owed like 100000 200000 in tax, not a lot of money. They charged him a $700,000 penalty just mm. for not telling them about the bank account. The penalty is half your money. 
So, yeah. So right now we're fighting that one. That case is um, came out of Florida, but right now we're in um, the 11th Circuit in Atlanta. Um, I'm I'm fighting that. I'm saying that they didn't run the audit properly. Otherwise, yeah. What kind of time you put into stuff like this? Like how oh, that is, case how, I've been working on years? five years. Oh, okay. So so how do you how, you can practice anywhere? Um, in federal court, I can get permission on a case by case basis. Okay. So I don't practice in state courts out of out of state. I'm mm -hmm. not dealing with. Florida law, I'm dealing with federal law. Gotcha. Okay. So, like, even though I'm not an attorney in Florida, if I find an attorney in Florida mm -hmm. and I hire them to look over the case and to vouch for me, then the court will let me practice. So, Bernard, is that why they frown so much on cash because of the tracing of it and everything for the cash purposes versus your debit and credit? Because, let's be real, I mean, AT, you got, you know, you got kids, my sister, everybody, they got kids, you know, babysitter comes in. You know, you're not debiting them on a little swiper. Right. You're giving them, you know, 30, 40 bucks cash at that point in time. Are we doing wrong? Are they doing wrong accepting it? I mean, is, you know. That's petty yeah. cash, though. That's but but I'm staying still, like, like little yeah. things. I've seen staff, if you paid them checks all the way through and you wanted to pay them a couple hundred bucks on something that they did a side job for you, they can report you just to be shitheads. You know what I'm sure. saying? For mm -hmm. something so small well, and stupid. <laughs> paying cash is not the problem. Right. You pay anybody it's however reporting you want. It. It's just... Put it on 1099. You know, there are laws, like, with uh, household employees for babysitters and stuff, but nobody yeah. cares about that stuff that much. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the issue about cash is reporting it right. Like, yeah. you know, one thing is, is if you get more than $10,000, you mentioned CTRs. Yes. Well, only banks and financial institutions and money services businesses have to fill out CTRs. Okay. okay. Regular businesses mm -hmm. don't have to fill out CTRs, but they have something else that's called a Form 8300. Yes. Okay, similar to a CTR. Anybody who gets more than ten thousand in your business, mm -hmm. it doesn't even have to be all at one time. It can just be a series of related transactions. Oh, really? So it doesn't have to be always a lump sum of ten no. on spot. They can spend three thousand every month cash, and by the fourth month, I've got to do this eight hundred three or eight eighty three eighty three hundred eighty three hundred to them. Um, that's if the transactions are related. So, like, if they're coming in and buying something from you and leaving, and then they come back next week and they buy something again, those are not related transactions. Okay, okay, okay. But if, if you're their electricity company, you sign one contract with them and you send them a bill every month, every month it's related. So if you spend more than 10000 yes, that's why some, some people who are growing are starting to get notices from consumers about, well, we have to report all this cash. Sure. I think, I have a theory, I haven't, I haven't found out, I think those people with consumers are getting in trouble because they're giving the money directly to Consumers Energy. Yes. You know, Consumers has those kiosks yes. just to pay your electric yes. bill. Yes, correct. But there's also third parties, like a party store you yeah. can go to and pay your bill. Yep. Kroger, I, Meyer party stores. Yeah, where you're using like a intermediary. Yep. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think the people who are getting those letters are the people who are not using the intermediaries. Uh, but I don't know for yes. sure. I think you may be right because it's it's the ones that were going to those kiosks. Yeah, because going you're giving the money directly to the yes. company. Yes. But now what we're seeing, like in the marijuana audits out of Colorado. Yep. That's where it started first. The yeah. eight of, the, the 8300. They yep. started yep. enforcing them. Yep. But now they're, they're going after landlords. Yes. A lot. Because same thing if you're a landlord. A lot of people are renting out space to growers. You sign one lease... And even if it's not ten thousand a month, even if you're doing a small space, you for the same. You know, thing. every every three four months, you got to do a, a, a eighty three hundred. Wow. So, you know, there's a lot of traps, and there's a lot of reasons. It's funny that they, the IRS hates cash because yeah. they can't, can't catch you. Can't can't say, yeah. But then they don't let you open a bank account if you sell marijuana. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. So yeah. they're shooting themselves in their foot. I've had so many cases. I had one guy, who operated a dispensary for like, fourteen months on email. Okay, back in the yeah, Wild West yeah, days yeah, when people yep. were making, I don't know how much money. The IRS came and they were auditing him and he went to somebody else and they were trying to settle the case. The IRS said, you made 20000 a month. Just sign this saying you made 20000 a month and we'll settle. It's not that bad of a deal when you think about it because you probably yeah. made a lot more than 20000 yeah. a month, right? Yeah, they, they just, they just it was want like, their cut. It was like 200Gs that they wanted. So he, came, he didn't like it. He came to me and said, what should we do? I said, well... They don't have a basis for an assessment. They mm -hmm. can't actually prove you made twenty thousand a month. Right. They just suspect. They Google how much does a dispensary make, and they say, <laughs> "Oh, it makes twenty thousand a month." Yeah. I said, "Tell them no deal. Make them prove it." I said. So, so he came over. I said, "I called him. I said, guys, no deal. I knew the auditor. There's these, this group in Detroit that run all the like kind of fraud cases. Mm -hmm. So I knew the auditor. Her name was Cheryl. I said, Cheryl, this is a you know garbage deal, and you know it. We're not taking it. I said, go do your audit. Call me when you're done. 
and she calls, she took like three months. And she calls me and she's like, come on, tell me what, what let's close this case, make me an offer. I said, okay. I said, maybe he made 20000 in the last month, but not the first month. You know, you got a business, you got to build it up. Mm -hmm. so, so he made like zero dollars the first month and then you know for the first three months and then five thousand the next three months and then he got shut down and he had to start over i did this model yeah, yeah. that said in 15 months he made 40k and we ended up settling the case for five thousand in taxes it's crazy from two hundred thousand down to five thousand yeah. and the only difference was i i threatened to make them prove their case and they couldn't do it right okay but i've had other people where it goes the opposite they spend yeah. all this money they go to the casinos, they buy fancy cars and, you well, know. They, I mean, they're, they're documenting their losses. They're right. documenting their, their income. So it's, it's like right. nothing you can so, do about that. That's, yeah. cool. That's Just like recently, like hip hop artists right now, they're under the, the radar. Like the IRS is as going as far as looking their Instagram. They're checking their social mm -hmm. media. What it does is it verifies how much they're making through their concerts that they're, or, or side jobs that they're doing and they're not letting them know. So when they're holding those stacks of money, they're counting them. While the wrist is on with the watch, yeah. they're counting that. <laughs> they're counting the chains. That's how yeah, the IRS... Yeah, this shit doesn't have to be theirs. Right. That's easily 50 cent disputed. rents all his stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uses prop money for the movie sets yeah. for his yep. <laughs> yep. So is there anything we didn't touch on right now, anything else that you want to let the viewers know? Um, let them know how they can get in contact with you. We are going to go ahead and provide that too with the link at, at the bottom of the page when we set you up on the video. But just let people know. What, you know, Do you have Instagram? Do you have social media? Yeah, I mean, have? I'm not hard to find. I'm all, I'm all over the internet. Mm -hmm. um, I think we pretty much touched on all the main areas. Yeah. Um, we didn't talk too much about the state, but I do state problems too. It's not just yeah. IRS. Um, the one thing I don't do is like planning. You know, people always come to me and they say, "Well, how do I? How should I set up my business? Mm -hmm. How do I do this?" You know, that's not my specialty. My specialty sure. is, whenever you have a problem related to your taxes, yep, you call me. I mean, it's just you know, uh, anything IRS, state, sales tax, income tax, excise tax, penalties, criminal tax evasion. You know, mm -hmm. anything dealing with that stuff, I'm your guy. Um, my office number is two four eight. 262-3400, you know, I got 24-hour answering service, so there's always somebody there calling, uh, answering the phones. So. Great. Yeah. Great. That's awesome. What Those, about your website? Yeah. Yeah, it's arlaw.com. It's really easy. Okay. And, and then the last tip I want to leave you with, I want to tell you that the biggest mistake I see people make mm -hmm. is when, when they get an audit letter, yep. their first thing is to take it to their CPA and have the CPA deal with it, and that is the worst mistake most most of the times people make for two reasons. One is the CPA probably doesn't know that much about how audits work. They probably do a few here and there when their clients get audited, they don't yeah. do them all day. And two, there's a conflict of interest. If there's a mistake, you the first thing I do is blame it on the CPA. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? And then the first thing the CPA them. does is blame it on the client. On the client. So yeah. so especially if you're worried and if there's something wrong with your taxes, mm -hmm. you know, you should talk to your tax guy, let them know what's going on. But always get somebody who was not involved in doing your taxes got you to defend you because they don't have to they don't have to cover up their own mistakes sometimes sure. you know everybody's natural nobody wants to admit when they mess up everybody great wants point. to yeah. great point well um at you got to use a question we want to so ask so we close out here. every uh, episode with a simple question and it usually gets deep so we're going to give you a chance to to answer it for us what does it mean to you to be Chaldean? What does it mean to me? That's a, I didn't know that question was coming. So <laughs> we got to talk to your assistant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, I, she's good, by the way. She, yeah, uh, she, she keeps on Sarah, top of your stuff, yeah, so it's good. On top of it. I, my life would be a mess without her. I think that to be Chaldean for me, I think we have a work ethic like nobody else and, and a commitment to whatever our craft is. Mm -hmm. And I think that we were always natural-born hustlers and business people and and to me it means that I, I have that drive that not everybody else has. All right. Yeah. Good. Very nice. Good. Thank well, thanks for joining us, man. Thanks for having me. Awesome. It's awesome, buddy. Love being here. Thank, Thank you. So we had the Teflon down against the IRS right here. We got uh, <laughs> AR Law, Vinar AR. And uh, make sure that you guys again uh, Link, hit the link, make sure you subscribe, share this gentleman's story. I mean, it's great. Many of you are in businesses that can use him. We'll be on Spotify, iTunes. Uh, we'll be on you, we'll, we will be on YouTube, Facebook, all social media outlets. Um, you can check him out at AR Law. Uh, he, he's a, locally available for you, too. 
Um, this uh, it, this episode was provided by uh, Clearview. Uh, Clearview is your security needs for both home and uh, commercial. So check it out, and we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks again, brother, and signing off. We'll see you.